Hello and welcome back to my Fantasia Toy Box for the next episode of Toy Box Tutorials. I'm Professor Toy Box. I've got Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey with me, and today we're going to do something a little different. We've been working on the interior of the Magician's Castle, and two weeks ago we finished the opening puzzle in this first courtyard. When Mickey descends the stairs over there, he sees a locked gate blocking his path, and brooms carrying water from the cistern over here to the well over there. And Mickey needs to defeat the brooms and activate the pump to drain the water from the well so he can access a tunnel that leads under the wall and comes up over there where he can get to the key. Now, when the player enters this toy box, the level starter over here kicks off the enemy wave generators for the brooms. The brooms will appear about two seconds apart and start marching towards the well. And it takes about 20 seconds to generate all 10 brooms. But where the player enters the toy box is over here on the starting pad. And so when the player shows up in the toy box, they appear on this pad. The level starter kicks in. It only takes Mickey about three seconds to get to the bottom of the stairs, but it takes about 20 seconds for all of those enemies to generate. And so we've got a little problem here. I don't want the player to come down those stairs until all of the brooms have been generated. Now, the easiest way to fix this is to come over to the enemy wave generators. And if you open up the logic menu and you come under the properties, you can set this hold until generated property on. And you can do that for both of these enemy wave generators. And the problem with that though is that the player will be unable to move or do anything for about 20 seconds, which will make the game look like it's frozen. So while it's an easy fix, it's not a good idea. And so I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to reconfigure the area up here at the top of the stairs and I'm going to give the player something to do that will delay them. I'm going to add a drawbridge, and that's my task for today. And then next time, I'll build a puzzle that the player needs to solve in order to lower the drawbridge. Now, to build the drawbridge, we're going to need to use a path. And so for today's lesson, we're going to revisit the Path Creator tool, because I want to address some unusual behavior that some of you have witnessed. I'll explain what's happening and why you're seeing that behavior, and then I'll share some tips for how you can work around it. And once we're armed with that knowledge, then we'll put it to use to build a functioning drawbridge. So the first thing I want to do is reconfigure this area at the top of the stairs. I'm going to take out this block here, and this one, and this one. And we'll come over here and I'll pick this one up by moving it and drop it back down. And then I'm going to drop down two of these uh, two by threes, just like that. And then we're going to put a one by three on either side of this. And that will be the opening going down for the drawbridge to sit. And then we'll come back down to the blocks drawer. And we're going to put in a few blocks here. So I'm going to put one up here and we'll go ahead and style this so that it matches the Dunbrock Castle brick. And I had this all set up as usual, and it reset the list here on me. So I got to scroll to the right and pick that up it's right here. And I'll set that to be my theme. So I'm going to put one there like that, and I'm going to put one over here like this. And I'm going to put this long block in here, about half a block back, like that. And then we'll scroll over to the left to the flat pieces. And for this small floor, I'm going to extend this out so that it comes to the edge over here like that. And then we'll go back up to building sets group six and just add some finishing uh, decorations. And reset that on me, but we'll go ahead and pick this block up and put it back down and that'll get us there quicker. 
So if I scroll over to the right, we have these uh, little finishing pieces here for the top. And I'm going to add a row of these across the top of this. With the short one in the middle. So that from out here, it looks like a nice finished edge. And we've got a little indent here for the drawbridge to sit in. And the drawbridge has to have somewhere to go to. So let's come back down to the blocks drawer and I'm going to use this large floor and I'm just going to put this in here temporarily as a spacer. And since we're done with the castle brick, let's go ahead and style this. And the wood texture that I want to use is back over here towards the beginning of the list of uh, styles. And it's the... Here it is. The wood one texture. I'm going to set that to be my theme. Just like that. And the drawbridge piece will sit basically in here like that. So that's the goal. And the, again, the drawbridge has to have somewhere to go to. So let's... Uh, Let's come out over here, and I'm going to pick up one of these blocks. And I'll center it like that on that bridge. And let's go ahead and style this. And I want to use the World of the Wisps from Brave. We've already used this texture in this toy box in other areas, so that would be good. Oops, I'm pressing the wrong button to cancel out of that. Okay, and then back up to building sets group six, and let's build a little entrance area here for the player to arrive in. So we're gonna pick up this three by three, and I'm gonna drop it in here like this. I'll put four of them here with some blocks up at the top kind of build a little room. And we'll move the toy box door and slide this back here into the back corner of this like that. And then I'll come get the starting pad. And we'll move this out here and put this right there. And then to finish off that little island, we'll come over here and grab uh, this piece and pick it up and put it down. That way I don't have to scroll through that entire drawer to get to this piece. And we'll put one out on this end, like this. Another one over here in the corner. Another one over there, and one on this corner, and then we'll scroll to the right and pick up this cliff edge. I'm going to put one on this side and one on this side. Alright, so there's our starting island, and the player will start here. The drawbridge will initially be up and the player will have to solve a little puzzle to lower the drawbridge and then come in and descend the stairs. And by that time, the brooms should have time to generate and I'll be there marching back and forth. So that's the plan. Now for the drawbridge, come back up to the blocks drawer. Ideally, we're gonna have this block sitting in here like this. And normally, let me slide this out for a moment. And normally the way you see a drawbridge works is it will rotate about an axis along the bottom edge of the bridge door. And so this will lower from this position into that position. Unfortunately, I 
can't find a way to rotate a block like that, but we can make it close by setting up a very tight circular path. And so I'm going to delete this, and we're going to move this block over here out of the way temporarily. This is going to be the block that we use for our bridge. And we'll come up to the Creativitoys drawer and go left to the Path Creator. And I'm going to put the Path Creator right down here in the middle of this and I'm going to tuck it back half a block, just like that. And of course this time it didn't put us in point creation mode, so we'll come in here and go into the button and it <laughs> kicks us way off into the middle of nowhere. But we'll come back up. Okay, so now we're where we want to be. And so we're going to create a path that's basically one block in size. So it's a very tight, it's the smallest circular path I can make. And we'll come up to the path creator open up the logic menu and go into the properties. And I'm going to set the speed on this to be 10. And I'm going to set the looped property on, which will close the loop, and we'll turn off the auto start objects when connected. And some of you already know the bug that I'm going to run into because you've tried to create a path with this orientation. But I won't spoil it for the rest of you. I'll show you what happens. So we'll go ahead and connect up this block to that path. So we'll open the logic menu for it, do a new path connection. Come over here and select the path. And connect it. And of course it jumps over here and it sits up on top of the path. And I'll come out over here and drop a couple of buttons that we're going to need. And we'll come into the block properties, and under the properties for this, everything in here is fine, but I want to set this orient along path flag to true, or to on. Movement style is loop, which is good. <clears throat> and so this way, the block will lower the way you would expect a drawbridge to lower. So that's great. And We'll come over here to this button, and we'll use this one to kick it off for today. So a new logic connection when pressed. We'll come over to the block, and we'll say start. And I want it to stop when it reaches this point. So under this point, we'll open the logic menu and do a new logic connection when the point is reached by the object on the path. We'll come up here to our object and we'll say stop. And I'll use this button as a reset. So for this we'll do a new logic connection when pressed. Come over here and we'll do a reset and stop. Okay, so that seems like that should be simple enough. <laughs> the bridge when it lowers is going to be in a little bit lower position than I'd like, but it should work. So we come over here and push the button, and the bridge is lowering, and this looks awesome. And it gets down to here, and where did it go? <laughs> what happened to my block, you're wondering? And basically, uh, <laughs> it looks like it worked pretty well till it got to the end. And the, what happened is the block jumped to a weird location. So let's create Let's recreate this on a little bit bigger scale so we can see what's actually happening here. And I'll explain what's going on. And we'll look at what we can do about it. So let's set up a circular path. And I'm going to use these large block walls out here. I'll put them right off the edge of this uh, building over here. This isn't going to be part of my toy box, but I'm going to set this up just so that we can uh, see it a little bit better. So that'll be our spacing. And then I'll scroll over here to the right and drop a block that we can use to attach to the path. I'll just put this square block right here. And then let's go back up to the Creativitoys drawer. And we'll create a path 
around this. And I'm going to start this path over here on the edge of this uh, platform, just like that. And this time it put it into point creation mode, so yay. And I'll put a point up here. We'll drop another one over here. And we'll drop the last one on the bottom edge of this and exit. And so those platforms kind of give us some uh, spacing so that we can end up with a round path here. And under the properties, I'm going to leave the speed. I'm going to set the looped flag and turn off auto start objects. All right, so now we have a circular path. And let's go ahead and attach this block to that path. And it puts it on top of that point. And then let's drop a couple of buttons out here on top of this wall that we can use to control that and watch what's happening. So I'm going to put one here and one here. And to make this simple for initially, we'll come in here and do a new logic connection when pressed. And rather than go to the block, I'll come to the path. And we'll do a reset and play. And then we'll come over to this button, do a new logic connection when pressed. We'll come back to the path and we'll do a reset and stop. All right, so now that we can see what's happening and there's no building pieces in the way, let's press the button and watch what happens. And just so I can see the path, let's go ahead and equip the magic wand. So Mickey's holding the wand. All right, so we press the button and you'll notice the block is moving around and at the top of the thing, it's on top of that path. And as it comes back down around the bottom edge of the path, you'll notice it's not on the outside of the path now, it's on the inside. And so the movement isn't quite what you'd expect. And it might be a little bit easier to see it and understand what I'm talking about. If we change one of the properties on here, on this block, so let's come into the properties, toy box path, and let's set the orient along the path to on. And now this puts the block on the outside edge of the path. And now let's come back over here, because this is similar to what we did with the drawbridge. And you can see it's the same problem, but it's a little bit easier to see it with that property turned on. So I'll push the button, and you can see it's moving along the outside edge of the path. And when it gets down to this point, it switches to the inside of the path. <laughs> and then when it gets back up to that point, it switches back to the outside edge of the path. So that's kind of weird. But what's happening is, when you connect a block to a path, it connects it to the top edge of the path. And so from this point on the path, all the way up and over to this side, the outside edge of the path is the top edge of the path. When you go below that point, and you come down and around and back up, the top edge of the path is the inside edge of the path. And so the block is always going to stay on the top edge of the path. And so that's why it flips its position when it reaches this point and switches to the inside. And when it gets back to this point, and it crosses that line, it switches back to the outside is because the block is staying on the top edge of the path and that's how it moves. And uh, <laughs> so to get the behavior we want, which is for the block to stay on the outside of the path, what we have to do, because there's no property or anything you can change to make it do that, what we have to do is drop a second path and so we'll come back over, and I just passed it. And I'm going to put this next path over here off of this point. And we'll put it one block away. And again, we'll put this one block away from that point. 
And one block away from that point. And one block away from that point. And then I'll exit. And so now we can come over here to the properties for this point. And close the loop. Turn off auto start. And now we have two paths that are a block apart. And you can see if that block were to rotate around there, it's now going to be a one block wide path. And so what we want to have happen is when we get to this point, we want the block to continue traveling around the outside edge of this circle, but it can't do that. So what we're going to do instead is when it reaches this point, we're going to do a new logic connection on that point. When the point is reached by the object on the path, we're going to come over to this path, which is why I dropped this here, and we're going to come down and say connect the triggering actor to the path. And so the path, the object traveling the path, will now switch to this one. And so as it continues moving along this path now, it'll be on the inside edge of this outer path, which puts it on the, relatively speaking, on the outside edge of the inner path. So we have to have two paths to get it to move the way we want along this vertical circle. And then likewise, when we come out here to this point, we want to put it back on the inner path. So we'll do a new logic connection on this point. When the point is reached by the object on the path, come over here and again connect the triggering actor, which is the block, to that path. And so now we can come over here and when we push the button it moves around the inner path or top edge of the inner path and then <laughs> doesn't do quite what you'd expect. And one of the reasons for that is, is because we haven't done a reset and play on that outer path. And I could hook this button up to do that, but with no block on there, that's not going to actually do anything. And so in order to get continuous movement, what we need to do is have this point right here connect over to that new path and have it reset and play. And so if we try to do that, though, we've already made a logic connection with that point, and so we can't do another one, so I have to cancel out of that. And what we're going to use instead, then, is a logic gate. And I don't need the logic gate for the open and close behavior of the gate, but I'm going to use it as a pass-through. So we'll put a logic gate out here off the edge of this, and we'll put it like there. And then we'll scroll over and drop another one on this side so we can do the same thing. And what we'll do here is when the point is reached by the object on the path, not only will we have it connect over to this point to connect that block to that path, but we'll come and do an input on this gate. And then on the logic gate, a new logic connection on output come over to this path creator and do a reset and play. And so now the block will switch over here and then start playing along that path. And likewise when we get to this point we'll do a new logic connection when the point is reached by the object on the path. Do an input to that gate and then from here do an output from the gate over to this path and do a reset and play. And then we'll come over here and push the button and now we should have the movement that we want. Oops, let's reset. <laughs> and actually I've got the uh, I think in a little bit weird state here. So let's come up here and detach this block. And I'll delete that link. And we'll come over and reconnect it. New path connection. OK, 
because the block was attached now to this path, but this button wasn't hooked up to that path. But now it's put back where it needed to be. So now we can come over here and push the button. The block starts moving. It's going along the top edge of the inner path. When it gets over here, it's going to switch to the outer path. And now it's actually moving along the top edge of the outer path. And when it reaches that point, it does a little hiccup there as it switches back to the inner path. And there's not really anything I can do about that, I don't think. But what we have now is continuous movement around the path that we were expecting. So it looks like it's moving around the outer edge of the inner path. And that's what we want. So let's come over here and stop the block. Now one thing you probably noticed is when it switches to that outer path, it's moving at a slower speed. And that's because the distance along this path is longer. And so to compensate, we have to tweak the speed of this path. And so the inner one's set at 100. I'm going to set the outer one to be 130. And I arrived at that number by some experimentation. So now if we come out here and we push the button, now that path should move at a pretty continuous speed around that whole thing. So the path speed, the block speed, is pretty much the same all the way around. So that looks really good. Now in our case over here, we're actually wanting the block to stop at some point, uh, that first point that it reaches. And so what do you do if you don't want to do a reset and play, but you want to actually connect to the block itself and do a start and a stop? Let's say you want to build a ferris wheel and you want the uh, these blocks to stop at a certain point where the player can jump on or whatever. And so what we're going to do is come down to our stop button and I'm going to delete the link to the path creator and instead we'll do a new logic connection when pressed. Instead of going to the path creator we'll come over to the uh, block toy box path and we'll do a stop. And on the other button We'll delete that link to the path creator and instead we'll do a new logic connection when pressed and again we'll go to the block and do a start. And right now what's happening is the block uh, when it reaches this point <coughs> is connecting to the logic gate which is going to that path. And so instead of going to the uh, path creator off the logic gate to do a reset and play. I want to delete that link and instead on output we'll come over to the block and we'll do a start because again when the block reaches over to that point and it switches over to this path point it's going to stop. And the same thing over here on this logic gate we'll delete the link to the path creator and instead, new logic connection on output, come over to the block, toy box path, and do a start. And so we're doing the same, this should work the same way, except now we're going to the block instead of the path. So this starts it moving. And when it reaches that point, it switches over, keeps moving. When it reaches that point, it switches back. Still have the same hiccup, but now I can come over here and it'll stop the block wherever it happened to be. And when I come over here and push play, it picks up from where it left off. So that's pretty good. Now, in the case of our drawbridge, let me go ahead and hit the stop. What we want to have happen is I want it to stop 
actually when it reaches this point. And um, to do that, we could try changing this so that when the output occurs, rather than starting the block, we do a stop. But that's not going to work, and we'll see that in a moment. So as it comes around, it should switch over to that other path. But now it's doing that behavior again. And that's unfortunate. But if we press this, it actually is attached to that path, but the block, for some reason, did not have an opportunity to shift position and get over there. But if we hit the play button, now it shifts over and it goes. So apparently the block needs a little bit of time in order to make that transition and switch over to the location where it needs to go. And so what we have to do for the case of our drawbridge is I'm going to put this back on output, come over to the block, and we'll do a start because it needs to continue moving around this outer path in order to make the jump over here. And we'll have to have it stop after it does that. And so for that we'll use a time delayer. And I'll put the time delayer out over here. And so on the path point, in addition to switching and connecting the object, the block, over to the other path and using the logic gate to get it to move along that path. We'll do a new logic connection when the point is reached by the object on the path. We'll come over to the time delayer and start a delay. And I'm going to set the time delayer properties. And we're going to set the time on this to be the smallest I can set this, which is a quarter second, 0.25. And then on the time delayer, we'll do a new logic connection. When the delay is completed, come over to our block and have it stop. So we come out of spark mode. And now let's uh, run it and see if it'll stop on that point where we want it to stop. So it did, but it <laughs> was a little bit below that point. And in the case of our drawbridge, that wouldn't work too good because it's at an angle. And so what we really want to have this time delayer do is on the delay completed, we'll come over here. Instead of stop, we'll do a reset and stop. So I edited that logic connection. And now we'll come over here to the point and just let it run back around the path. And now when it reaches that point, it should switch over and then jump back to the position where I want it to be. And it's up a little high, but this block is a lot thicker than this one. So I think in our case, this should work out okay. So that's how we're gonna get this block to stop and uh, be positioned where we need to. So now that we've seen how to make this work the way we want, let's come over here and modify our behavior over here to get this to work right. And so first thing I wanna do is come over to our reset button and let's put that block back at the top of the path. And then we're going to need a second path. So come into the Creative Toys, go to the right. And now where we want up there a continuous movement around there, what's interesting here is this point is below the edge of this floor. And so while I could come out over here and make it do that, I'd actually like the bridge to be up here. 
And so for the outer path, I don't have to have it, in my case, <laughs> follow that one precisely. So I'm going to put the point out here at the level where I want this to be. And then we need to come down one block. And we're going to put this right underneath here. And then one block in, one of these three by threes rather, and up at the floor level. So right here will be the next point. And this point will be up here. Oops, let me see. Where am I at? <laughs> oh, this point right there. So it's going to sit right here. And I'll exit. And so what I've done with this outer path is I've created a rotation around the actual point where I would like the bridge to actually rotate along, which would be the edge of this rock here. So we'll come over to this uh, new path, and I'm going to set the, I'll leave the speed set at 100 for right now, and I'm going to close the loop and turn off the auto start flag. Okay, so this outer path will actually put the block right where I want it to be. And so as it's rotating along this little inner path, it gives me the movement that I want as the bridge lowers. And once it gets into position, it should snap up back to this point, to the height where it would be even with this floor and that floor. And so that's the ideal movement that I want. And so now what we will do is... I'm going to come over to this path point. And right now I've got it connected to that block, so I'm going to actually remove that link. And we'll do a new logic connection on this path point. When the point is reached by the object on the path, just like on the other uh, example, we'll come to this point and we'll connect the triggering actor to that path. And then we're going to need a logic gate and a time delayer. And we hit the time delayer first, so I'll put this over here for right now. And then the logic gate's just a few more over from that. And we're going to need another logic gate for the reset, so let's put this up here. Okay, so we've already set this to connect the bridge over to that other path. So the other thing we have to do is new logic connection. There's actually two things. So when the point is reached by the object on the path, we'll come over to our logic gate, do an in, whoops, not a close, an input. I'll come edit that connection. Or actually, I deleted it. <laughs> That's all right, we'll recreate it. So, on the path point, when the point's reached by the object on the path, we'll do an input, and then a new logic connection on the logic gate, on output, come over to our bridge, toy box path, and start. So it'll keep moving around that outer path. And then we'll also kick off the time delayer. So, new logic connection when the point is reached by the object on the path. Come over to the time delayer, start the delay, and we'll set the time delayer properties again to the smallest I can set it, which is 0.25. Oops, what did I do? 0.25. There we go. And then do a new logic connection from there when the delay is completed. Come back to our block and do a reset and stop. So this button will start it moving and then it should stop and snap into place where I want it. And for this one, in order to do a reset, Right now, it's doing a stop on that block, so that's not going to help. So I'm going to remove that. 
And what we actually can do is just continue to use this button to play again. And it'll continue to then to move around this outer path. And so when it reaches this point up here, this one, we'll do a new logic connection. When the point is reached by the object on the path, we're going to come back to the original path. And we will connect the triggering actor to that path. And then, oops, we'll do a new logic connection on the point. When it's reached by the object on the path, come up to the logic gate, do an input on the logic gate, new logic connection on output, come back to the lock, and do a start so we can keep it moving. And then we gotta have another time delayer. And again, I'll set the properties on this to the smallest amount of time, although this doesn't really matter because this is a reset button. But just so we don't have to wait too long, we'll come to this point and do a new logic connection. When the point is reached by the object on the path, connect to the time delayer to start the delay. New logic connection when the delay is completed, come over to the block and do a reset and stop. And that'll give the block time enough to connect to the path and start moving so it will snap into the position it needs. And that should be it. Let's see how it works. So we'll come over here and push the button. The bridge starts lowering, which is beautiful. And then it snaps into position. So it does a little bit of a hiccup there. Um, not sure there's anything I can do about that, but it works. And then to do a reset, we just hit the play button again. And that moves around the outer path. And I don't really care how it's moving because it just needs to get back up to the top. And then it snaps back into place. And you can speed that up a little bit. Um, to get it to reset better. And you can also set the speed on this outer path so that it doesn't dip so low. So we could, for example, on the outer path, set the speed to 10. And this would be probably the ideal speed for uh, playtime when the player is actually in here playing. So when we come over here and push the button, the bridge moves. And when it connects to that outer path, it won't move too much. And then it snaps into place. So that fixes that hiccup. You still got a little hiccup there, but it's not as big a hiccup. The downside of that, of course, is when you want to reset, it's going to take forever to go around that outer path. <clears throat> but while it's moving around the outer path, we could come over here and adjust the properties and set the speed to the maximum. <clears throat> excuse me, which is 300, and then that zips right around and drops into place, and then we can put that back to 10. So that's our drawbridge, and that's how you can get objects to move in a vertically circular path the way you would expect. Sorry this was a little bit longer video today, but it couldn't be helped. It took a little time to explain what was going on and show you what you could do about it. Next time we'll build the puzzle that opens the drawbridge, and we'll look at a new creativa toy that will help us do that. In the meantime, I hope you found today's video helpful, and if so, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel or follow me on my blog if you haven't already done that so you don't miss the next episode. That's all for me today. Have a great weekend.